Hello and welcome back to Lovely Gardening Bits. I've just put a bit more makeup on. Does it look like it's too much? Do I have blush blindness? Will I look at this when I go to edit and be like, what is on your face? I had like a work meeting this morning, so I needed to make myself look presentable, at least from like here up, because um, that's all that they were going to see. But just want to say hi. Last week I didn't get a chance to film a video because I just felt exhausted. Because I haven't had like a holiday, I didn't have a holiday this year or last year. Um, so I feel like maybe it's a little bit of burnout. Maybe I just need like a little bit of a break. But um, so I did, I kind of like took last week off from the garden. But then the other day I was watering the garden. And I feel like when you water the garden, it's kind of like weeding. You should take a new time when you're like pouring the water in the things and you start to see things and notice things, do you know? Because I feel like, and I know I've said this before, when we're in the garden, we spend so much time doing, doing and busy, busy and getting the jobs done. And sometimes it's nice to just observe. It's been very warm here. No complaints. We had thunder um, two nights ago, I think. Um, so that kind of broke the humidity. The humidity is what gets me. It makes all my little bits here go curly. So today's the only day that I can film garden content. And because tomorrow I have to like film uh, for work. And then Thursday, I'm going to go and collect my nephew. He's coming up for a few days. So I might actually try and get him to dig up the potatoes. We'll harvest those. I think he'd get like a bit of crack out of that. But I just wanted to do a little tour of the Jardin because there are some learnings that I've had. And I thought that I'd share them because listen, this, I don't know what I'm doing. And this is a way of kind of like passing on my learnings because I think each year and each season we're learning all the time. What I will say is <laughs> not buying plants and stuff this year and visiting garden centres as much as I usually would has hurt my heart. <laughs> but I keep saying it'll be worth it in the end. Like next year, it's gonna be all about the garden. I'm gonna have garden content coming out of my pores because I'll have a greenhouse by then. The work will be done on the house. Let's go outside. Let's have a little look because I want to show you something. I just, I just love seeing what works and what hasn't and what I would do differently. Anyway, come on. Okay, so as you can see, the garden is very, very higgledy-piggledy, but that's okay. So I have the microphone up close, so hopefully you can hear me. So see these here. They are going to to like turn into flowers. What, what I'm trying to say, bloom very soon. Usually it's like the middle to middle of August to like mid-September. Now these will need to come up whenever the work starts but I was like I'm going to leave them there until the last minute. I'll even dig them up like the day before the worker guys come but I feel like we have definitely more plants here. These are an aster and they're like kind of purple daisies and just wait till you see them. I definitely will be moving this grass because they're just real messy and floppy. I don't like them. I remember a couple of weeks ago the terracotta achillea wasn't really terracotta ing Now look at it. And the bees and the hoverflies love them. Now maybe not this minute, it's quite breezy out today, but I just love the different colours. And like when you look at it, the border here yeah, it looks a bit higgledy-piggledy, but I love the colours of the terracotta. We've got the roses. We've got the verbena. Oh, my God. The verbena is very vibrant and there's loads of it. But anyway, I think I would like to try and dry some of this terracotta achillea. <gasps> Sorry, the bees are everywhere. Anyway, so then the other day when I was watering, I noticed in here, see the red there? There. They are a crocosmia. But they're kind of like a mix of red and yellow. So so that little scaldy plant there, there so they're, those crocosmia have been and gone and they're just pure red. They're like the lucifer one. And then up here, there, I had yellow ones, right? And I only had one plant of those. I bought them in like the park, I think, um, two years ago. They didn't come up last year, but they've come up this year. And then I noticed then here, look, so these are kind of like in behind the rose but I love the fact that they're like a little mix of yellow and red now I don't know if they're kind of cross-pollinated maybe this is just a different breed and um, maybe birds must have dropped the seeds or something I don't know anyway I thought that was really interesting so the rose bush it's kind of filling out a little bit like these seem to be kind of like new little sprouts but I don't know, I think I need to f properly feed the rose. I think whenever we do get the garden done, or the house done, this is kind of where, maybe like where that, where that um, concrete post is, maybe that's where this border will start. Sorry, it must be sequel time. 
Um, anyway, so look again, more Achillea. Hold on, let me just zoom in. I love them. And they really, really love this border. So they seem to like get bigger and divide kind of more every year. So I like that. Now I do have a rose in behind there. That is definitely the wrong position. But listen, it'll be grand. And then we have like the verbena. So when I was watering the garden the other day, um, I the, the verbena was just full of bees and a few butterflies. But like, how vibrant are they? So I think if you are looking for like a little bit of structure in your garden, um, that the pollinators and bees will love, and you get so much impact, I would definitely recommend verbena. And these are so easy to do cuttings of. So we like that a lot. So then, look, my zinnias. Now, they look a little bit worse for wear, but like, they're there. They came up. As you can see here, I have been um, pulling up some of the nasturtiums because they're kind of taking over this pot. So, and I want to make sure that, I think I have like a couple of little squash plants in there. And I want them to be able to like get a bit of sun. Oh, look. I got bee or peas. So. This is nothing really happening with that plant, but then over here, this one, I can see a little yellow um, courgette. Yeah. I think that's happy there, and I can see that the leaves are nice and big. This is, oh my god, sorry, look at this. That's my curly kale. Oh, do you remember when it was just like a little miserable looking thing a few weeks ago? I'm holding off on these kind of golden peas until Matthew comes. I think some of them are kind of gone. Yeah, the corn in the cob is nowhere near as big as it usually is. Now it is a different type of corn in the cob that I've grown this year. But like the cobs themselves look pretty big, don't they? See there with like the pinky silks. So yeah, that is that. We're going to dig up these potatoes here. And also, look, the spring onions have thrived. Now, again, as I said, I do need to weed all of this, but... Oh my God, look. Cucumber. Cucumbers. Oh my God, that's after growing very large. Okay. That's after growing really large. Okay, that's good to know. I need to tie that up onto the pole here. So I'll definitely do that. So what I'm trying to do is because, fingers crossed, the greenhouse will go here, I want things that are going to be all harvested and finished. Oh, look, sorry. Look, it's my gladioli. It's starting to sprout. Oh, that's made me happy. Now look at the size of these um, things. What do you call them things? Foxgloves. That's mad looking. But this kind of growth brings me joy. Um, the little curly kale is doing okay there. I did throw these little amimages here and they seem to be sprouting. I'll grow them properly next year. Um, now, here is one of my biggest learnings. Now look at this. So these are the sunflower, the little Doris. This is the biggest that they have ever, ever, ever gotten. Um, usually I would put them in pots, but you'll see that you get lots of heads out of them. But do you remember how teeny tiny they were a few weeks ago? when I was trying to like do my little slug capture doodads. Um, so yeah, the slug's completely decimated that pea plant. I've got a few peas over there that'll get Matthew to harvest and we've got a curly kale that survived. More gladiolis, gladioluses, gladioli. But look at these. Now, this compared to... Now, that one there has been decimated by the slugs. But we have like two kind of larger ones, no, actually three larger ones that have survived, but they're nowhere near about the, the size they should be at the, oh my God, sorry. I just noticed that pigeon there. Sorry. I didn't know you were there. Are you hurt? I'm, I'm, a I'm not going to go near you. Nope. Hope it's okay. Um, sorry, but I was just saying, look at these. Well, first of all, First of all, look at my little olive tree. That's sprouting. That makes me happy. But yeah, these sunflowers compared to that little one there and 
these ones these are the exact same ones so obviously the soil here isn't as like nutrient dense as the one in the bed I hope that pigeon's okay usually they fly off I'll keep an eye on her is it her or he or are they them anyway but what I did realize this year is that I didn't actually mulch this soil at all so that needs to be done kind of like this autumn I'm going to do a Catherine and mulch the living daylights out of everything but look we're after getting a second flush of flowers of roses they're so fab we've got like some Achillea in the back there they're gonna be pink ones I need to um, deadhead those but then also save some seeds and I'm gonna save the lupin seeds here as well I need to, there's just loads I need to do. Pigeon, are you okay? And then see the brown uh, sweet peas. So there's these pots here, they're brown, they're ready to collect as opposed to the green ones, they're not quite ready. But yeah, I've definitely lacked in the mul mulching department. Because even here, even here needs to be mulched. And I'm definitely, I think I'm gonna prune the budley as well because that's just taken over the whole thing. Um, I do love this grass. I don't know what one it is, but it's lovely when it's like this, but then it's also lovely when it's backlit in like the, kind of the evenings. So this section is definitely looking a little bit worse for her. <laughs> but it's okay. Just I like, can't water the stuff now today and tomorrow. I didn't realise today we have like a water shortage thing. Anyway, um, we've gotten a good few tomatoes from our harvest. I've just been leaving them here to get a little bit of rainwater the other day. And going little peppers. I think I'm going to try and harvest those. Yeah, I want to try and harvest those this weekend when Matthew's here. Now, I love the fact that we've gotten more roses from this rose bush. We didn't get any apples whatsoever from the apple tree, but again, maybe it needs to be repotted, maybe it needs new soil, mulch. I've definitely been a bad plant mom now this year. But we've got like kind of like loads of little tomatoes from here. So I do want to try and dry seed that lavender. Hold on. Focus. Yeah. It's kind of like a paler lavender to the usual one. But I think that's going to be fab. There's actually like a few arty things that I want to do with the garden. Like kind of flowers from the garden this year. But that will be a next week job. Look, the honeysuckle has loads of little buds. That's cute. They're lovely. I do need to tie those in as well to kind of go along because now this year my um maybe it's because I didn't mulch here but the climbing hydrangea didn't do much just I think I need to like overhaul this border I just don't want to do anything just yet until I decide kind of what's happening with the garden with the greenhouse there but I think I might actually sketch things out now look that looks cute I just love those cosmos right I'm going to keep an eye on that pigeon Cause maybe he's are you just having a rest? I don't want to like go over if, if they're injured and like freak them out. So yes, I feel like this verbena was a big success. And all I do at the end of um not the start of spring is I cut them way back to like a better foot high and they just love it. As in the bees love them. I'd say give this another few days and that is gonna be full. Of purple daisies i'm excited yeah so i have to hold this up here because it's quite windy today i just wanted to show like little updates in the garden and it's just been yeah one of those real kind of mishmash years when it comes to being out in the garden i say years like i've do this for four years now i'm already excited for next year i know that i'm going to be able to put some permanency on the garden and like having the greenhouse as like a proper structure to kind of work around um I'm excited but come here tell me what is working in your garden at the moment what have you noticed is growing more in kind of in one area compared to the others because like the fact that those little little Doris Doris um sunflowers have done so well in the veg bed considering they were like miserable looking um just makes me so happy but anyway but anyway I will see you in the next video and until then happy gardening hope you get a bit of rain hope you get lots of sun and lots of harvest lots of flowers lots of blooms and I'll see you then.